From Hulk and the Agents of Smash to the Fantastic Four animated series of the 1990s, his appearance in comic books for decades, and with his potential to debut very shortly for the first time as a live-action villain in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, now is a perfect time to brush up on your knowledge of this extremely powerful villain, He Who Annihilates, Annihilus the Immortal, the Bug King, the Insect Monarch, the Living Death That Walks. Let's talk about Annihilus. Before we start, though, I do want to say thank you, whether it's your first time here, are you back for more for watching JLS Comics? Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the content we upload just like this each and every week. Let's jump into the video here. Created by the legendary duo of Stan the Man Lee and Jack the King Kirby, Annihilus first appeared in Fantastic Four Annual Number 6. Eons ago, this race of beings that looked like Thundercats, called Tyannans, lived in the Negative Zone. They built life-seeding technology, which they traveled around far and wide to the farthest reaches of the Negative Zone to find barren planets to seed with new life. I'll explain the negative zone more in a moment. One of their seeding vessels crashed in Sector 17A on a planet known as Arthros, and the seeding spores spread all across the planet, kickstarting Genesis and new life on the once barren planet. In the process, though, the Tyannans died out. They died out of starvation. But the seeds and spores gave birth to an insectoid-like species known as Arthrosians. One of these was named Annihilus. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 5, number 3 from 2019 says that Annihilus is the firstborn son of a cosmic being named Oblivion, who's an aspect of the personification of death. He lives in an area where there is nothingness. The negative zone is negatively charged energy. Our universe is positively charged energy. Where he lives is nothing. No energy. But if Oblivion being his father is true, it also means that Annihilus has a sister named Marge. That issue is the same issue that had Hela and the Black Order in front of Annihilus wanting to recover Thanos' head. She drew her sword on him and said that she, goddess of death, knows his true death and who kills him. Anyhow, the Arthrosians hated Annihilus for his ability to think. He ran around and then found a massive vessel full of death and decay and the remnants of the Tyannans. Inside this massive vessel, he found a purple helmet, which told him the entire history of the Tyannans, including their power. He took the life canisters strewn about and created the cosmic control rod that for 10 centuries allowed him to grow in strength and intelligence. And with this rod, Annihilus was able to gain control over all the other insectoid Arthrosians and build a massive army he calls the Annihilation Wave. It was in Fantastic Four Annual 6 that Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four discovered the Negative Zone on the other side of an energy field, exploding with the energy that's Kirby Crackle, called the Distortion Field, and was able to build a portal to travel there. The thing is, time and space work differently in the negative zone. One day here is equal to 11 months there. Living organisms must actually find a way to reverse their polarity in order to travel in or out of the negative zone, depending on which way you're headed. In the MCU, when Annihilus debuts, it very likely could be an aspect of the quantum realm that becomes their version of the negative zone. For a while, the negative zone was treated almost like a jail, sort of like how Kryptonians used the phantom zone for interning prisoners. In Fantastic Four 108, Annihilus went up against Janus the Nega Man, a guy who was able to harness and siphon off the energy from the negative zone. Annihilus spared Nega Man's life in exchange for helping him invade this universe, but Nega Man ultimately died in the exploding atmosphere, which is where the distortion field is, and which is what the contact point of the two universes is called. In Fantastic Four 140, Annihilus smashed through Reed's portal and entered the positive universe. It's then after defeating Reed, the Thing, Johnny, and Medusa of the Inhumans that he sat down and told the story of his past to the FF's friend, Wyatt Wingfoot. In Avengers 89, Rick Jones was trapped in the negative zone and lured Captain Marvel there to help free him. Annihilus used one of Reed's portals to try to follow them to reach Earth on their way back out, but was defeated and beaten back by the Avengers. And a few issues later, Rick Jones was able to use the Destiny Force to defeat Annihilus. In 1972's Marvel Team Up number 2, the Frightful Four and an entranced, hypnotized Spider-Man went to Fantastic Four headquarters at the Baxter Building to learn how to harness the Negative Zone's powers, which brought them right to the doorstep of Annihilus. And Annihilus answered the call. And he almost crossed over through the portal, but old Flamehead got Spidey out of his trance and they flipped a switch which shut the portal down and Annihilus was sucked back into his zone. Fantastic Four 179 found Reed Richards helpless in the negative zone after the Brute threw him in there which forced Johnny Storm, the Thing, and Reed to temporarily ally with Annihilus. Then in Thor 404 and the next issue, Annihilus tried to attack Asgard but was defeated by King Odin in 406. He took Odin to the negative zone, but then Thunderstrike showed up to beat him up. 
and bring Odin back to his own realm. In 1999's Fantastic Four 19, Reed Richards' fold space transceptor malfunctioned and the team found themselves in the negative zone where they soon ran into Annihilus and his horde of proctors had swarmed around like angry wasps from a disturbed nest. In a wonderful Jack Kirby homage meant to slot into the Fantastic Four run just before Kirby left the title came 2001's Fantastic Four World's Greatest Comic Magazine with art by Bruce Timm and writing by Eric Larson. In the ninth issue, entitled Nightmare in the Negative Zone, Doctor Doom invaded the Negative Zone with Captain Marvel in pursuit. Rick Jones linked to Marvel by the way the negabands they both wore, so he had to warn the Fantastic Four. Doom had the Cosmic Cube, the Trumpet Horde of Atlantis, the Watcher's Ultimate Machine, the Helix of Randak, and now he wanted Annihilus' Cosmic Control Rod. But Annihilus' big event was called, appropriately, Annihilation. It was a massive event in 2006 that swept through the Marvel Universe, quite literally. Annihilus used his Annihilation Wave to breach the crunch. In an attempt to invade the universe, he quickly took down Xandar, leaving Nova the sole Nova Corps member in the universe. He killed Quasar too and took his Negabands, which gave him even greater power. The writer on the series, Keith Giffen, said, quote, It's like a Blitzkrieg attack, the width of two entire star systems, just coming at you huge, vicious, and overwhelming. He also took out the Kiln and used Aegis and Tenebras to take down Galactus, whom he, along with aid from Thanos, used to start collecting all the energy in the positive universe. Silver Surfer ended up freeing Galactus, who took out most of the Annihilation Wave, what Annihilus forces called the Galactus Obliteration. Then, in a final battle with Annihilus, Philo Val yanked the Negabands off his wrist, which is when Nova shoved his arm right down Annihilus' throat, ripped out his organs from his body, instantly killing him. But, as it was revealed in Fantastic Four 600, He's always reborn upon dying with his, quote, endless resurrection, he can't stop living. When Annihilus died, another took his place named Ravenous, who signed a peace treaty, ending the Annihilation conflict. But Annihilus was reborn from an Annihilation Wave queen in another pod. The pod was put in the care of a regent named Catastrophus, who wanted the power and the cosmic control rod for himself, and in War of Kings Ascension, number two, they found that he was using the cosmic control rod to keep Annihilus as a baby. Talon, Darkhawk, and the fraternity of raptors ended up killing Catastrophus, and Annihilus once again grew up. In 2010, Fantastic Four hit issue 578, and with that came the introduction of the Cult of the Negative Zone. The cult was basically this group of people attempting to gain access to the portal Reed had at the Baxter building, and by gaining access to the portal, they would gain access to the Negative Zone, where they'd been promised everlasting life. During this arc, they actually succeeded, and the Arthrosians spilled through the portal, overwhelming Johnny, Franklin, Richards, and all of the future Foundation. Franklin used his immense powers to beat back the Horde, right back through the portal, but the portal had to be locked from the negative zone side, so Johnny heroically sacrificed himself, trapping himself in the negative zone, but the portal was shut. Annihilus demanded the portal be open, but Johnny refused to follow his demands and he was killed for his insubordination. This group of universal and humans called Light Brigade helped the now resurrected Johnny Storm steal the cosmic control rod from Annihilus, so they were able to escape, go back to Earth 616, and end up fighting some Kree, but that's for another story. In Thanos vs. Hulk, which was written by legendary cosmic comic book writer Jim Starlin, Blastar, also from the Negative Zone, was acting as an agent to Annihilus, which drew Thanos, the Hulk, and Pip the Troll into a battle. In the process of Annihilus trying to harness Hulk's gamma radiation-derived powers, he himself became a Hulkified mass with 24-inch pythons. Whoops, wrong Hulk. But he did become Anaya Hulk. In all new, all different Avengers, Annihilus found some Negabands and used them as target waypoints to fire his Negaband-powered Positron Cannon between the Positive Universe and the Negative Zone. And then in November and December of 2019, Marvel released Annihilation Scourge, a six-issue storyline where Annihilus worked with Nova, the Fantastic Four, Beta Ray Bill, and the Silver Surfer to stop a different invading army. Because of his death and rebirth cycle, Annihilus will be around for a long time. His first appearance gave us his ultimate motive. For only by destroying life can Annihilus be forever reborn. It's a paradox that makes him an awesomely fascinating character. He wants to crush all life to protect and preserve his cosmic power, granted gift of immortality, and his cosmic control rod. Very selfish, it's very one-sided, it's very different than Thanos' motivation. He has the history, the power, and the motive to take his turn in the live-action realm to take over the overarching villain mantle from Thanos, and so he will soon enough as he breaches the barrier between pages and live action for his debut 
in the MCU. And so that's it for this one, my friends. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can be one of the first to know when we upload videos just like this each and every week. And as always, go ahead and leave me your comments and thoughts down below in the comments. We'll continue the conversation down there. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.